Hey guys, welcome to another episode of F1 2021 here on the Chesnoy Place channel. The penultimate round of season two in Australia today as we head to the race weekend. We know that it's mainly going to be dry, but it should, provided that the weather looks the same as we load it up now as it did at the end of the last uh, stream, it does look like it's going to rain at the very end of the Grand Prix. So there will be some wet weather running at the end. So we'll probably be doing multiple stops in this Grand Prix. Moving forward, we hope to continue our really good form. Of course, uh, we picked up uh, points finishes in most of our last eight Grand Prix. A fourth, a twelfth, a third, a fourth, a fourteenth, a fourth, a first, and a seventh in Brazil. That could have been better had we had a little bit more luck. Obviously, the first was with all of the luck in Mexico. We evidently used all of it up and it flung the other way in Brazil. We finished 13th in Australia last year. So I'd like to finish better than 13th this year if we can. That would be lovely. But currently 7th in the driver's standings, which is entirely unexpected. Judging by the... Or if you factor in the start to the season we had. Uh, it was a 10th in Bahrain, not a 5th. A 13th, a 19th and 11th. And then an 8th, 10th, 7th, 13th. A ninth, and it was only really since Belgium that we really kicked on to uh, to start bringing in the points and the subsequent trophies as well. The Constructors' Championship sees us 27 points behind Aston Martin. That's not insurmountable over the course of two Grand Prix weekend, although we do have grid penalties again on the way for Australia. We're saving our resource points, we're saving our money, and we will have a splurge at the beginning of Season 3. But for now, we're going to crack on. Do drop the video a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out more. Follow me on Twitch, link in the description to come and watch these live. If you missed the last video, which has, for some reason, got about half as many views as all of the others, then do go and check the channel page for the footage of that Brazilian Grand Prix. A number of you have, uh, have missed that video, so do go and check it out to find out what happened there and how that 7th came about. Uh, but for now, I'm going to dive into the, the race with my Twitch chat, and I'll see you guys after practice. A 119 flat is what we've done there at the end of practice. It's not amazing, and there will be... Aha, no. <laughs> and there will be less fuel in the car when we go in quali, but... Session has drawn to a close, so let's Q3 is questionable Science. at the moment. Q3 is questionable. Obviously, we're taking a 10 grade, a ten place grid penalty anyway because of the new components we've had to take for this penultimate race. So I'm not sure if we'll make it through to Q3 here. In fact, I'm pretty confident I won't make it through to Q3 here. But we shall we'll wait and see what happens in quality. We might get a little bit lucky. We might, we might not. Uh, with regards to second driver, not sure yet what we're doing. With Robert, he got a good second place. He got a great second place in... Is he going to go up a level? He is. He got a great second place in Mexico. But obviously, we lucked our way to first. And he lucked his way to second. So, he wasn't that strong in Brazil. We'll see if he's uh, we'll see if he's going to be strong in Australia and Abu Dhabi. If he can be strong in Australia and Abu Dhabi, then Robert Schwartzman stands a chance of keeping his seat. If he's not that strong at either of the remaining two tracks to add to a poor Brazil, then I'm pretty sure I'm going to replace him. We haven't upgraded the car for a few weeks now, a few races, because we're saving resource points. That puts me P15. There is enough time left in the session to go once more. But there's no point because I'm not going to improve. Because I'm shit around Australia. It's probably going to be out in Q1. Uh, we have a 10 place grid penalty anyway. But there is no way I'm getting into the 17s to get close to everybody else. I am just shit slow at this track. We are through. We are through. But by the skin of my teeth. And I'm not going to improve it by enough to make it worth going out. Gonna go a little bit quicker on this lap, but only by a tenth. We're still six tenths off I lot in twelfth, so it's gonna be uh, a P22 start for this Grand Prix, unless other people have uh, other technical dif difficulties. Obviously, we were on a, a much more worn set there, which is why our lap time was so com so uncompetitive. But Lando putting in a 16.5 is actually silly. Where he's found a 16.5 is beyond me. 
when I can't even do an 18 5. 25.8 is my first sector. 25.5. So I'm only I'm only a couple of tenths off in sector one. 21 flat, three tenths off in sector two. 31.6. I'm one and a half seconds slower than Landon Norris in the third sector. It's the third sector I'm losing all of my time. Well, most of my time. Like I'm losing 25% in sector one, 25% in sector two, and 50% of my time to the AI in sector three. It is what it is. We shall start from the back and make as much progress forward as we possibly can during the course of the Grand Prix. Robert is through to Q3, though. Congratulations to him. And there is potentially the scope to start maybe ninth, because he's only just behind Sebastian Vettel. But I think any further than ninth is uh, an absolute no, I think. Valtteri did a 16-2. I might as well just pack up and go home. A 16-2. Good, Good day today, was it, Claire? <laughs> Uh, uh, of course. I broke the rules. How will not making Q3 affect your strategy tomorrow? Uh, we'll, st we'll, still be aiming, we'll still be aiming for points. We'll still be aiming for points. Was a good day for you? Uh, not happy at my own performance, but... What could have gone better? I could have, could have driven better. Um, none of those are really an issue, so it's not, it's not... Appreciate your time. Not necessarily the car, it's me that's slow, not the car. The car is quick. Australia's just not a strong track for me. Not a strong track for me. Some we're good at, some we're not. This is one of the not. To the race then, and to figure out strategy with that rain to factor in at the end. So the rain will come in the last few laps, but when it does come, it looks like it's going to be heavy. So maybe it lap 50-ish. We could expect some rain. Welcome to Melbourne. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff, thanks, it's Crofty. Right, let's see if anyone else took any grid drops. Race. And also, Andrew if Robert Bottas was able to finish any higher than 10th in, uh, in Q3. 16 fives again. Norris, oh. Ricardo, Max Verstappen, and Perez. Sainz. So it's a Fettel 8. So Schwartzman, yeah, no. Yeah, Schwartzman's taking a grid penalty himself. Leclerc. Lovely! Lovely! <laughs> Mick Schumacher. He starts 14th. Mick! Mick in 13th? Martin. What Joe is a Hass doing in 13th? Wow. Stroll. Stroll took a grid penalty Sunoda. as well. Sunoda and Ilot both took grid penalties grid too. Penalty. But Violet. I'll be last, Wood. I think? No. We are 21st. 21st. Okay, never the mind then. Well, Robert's taken a grid penalty. I've taken a grid penalty. Yikes. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to run on softs. And then we shouldn't be on the mediums for too long. I might be able to go soft, 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 to be fair. And then it will rain. But I can't guarantee that. So we'll gauge our tyre wear and the weather. And maybe we'll go on to another set of softs instead of the mediums at the end of the Grand Prix if the rain is on its way. But... We are go I'm pretty sure I'm going to get lapped today, so I will put the fuel quite low. But a two-stop is the way forward. Softs to softs, probably to softs again, and then enters at the end of the race. If the rain comes, comes down hard enough, which we expect it to do. Right, let's do a quick prediction for you guys. We're starting 21st. I will say... Duh. It's ambitious, but points or nah. It's ambitious, but points or nah. From 21st, we will try and get into the points. Let me know in the predictions. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we will be back for the start of the Grand Prix. So tyres are ready. Everybody at the front of the grid is already lined up and waiting for us to get round the back. And we are ready to go for... An unpredictable, probably, Australian Grand Prix. Unpredictable is probably the word that we'll use heading into this. On your marks. Get set. Go. I mean, Latifi was off the mark super quick. 
Latifi just flew there, so we've dropped to the back. <laughs> but we won't stay there. That's for sure. Latifi just was gone. Try and take Latifi. Try and take Calamilot if I can. Sneaking up the inside here. Still on my inside nose board in behind me. Did make contact with Lance there. We'll just check my front wing. No, we're all right. I think we're all right. A little bit of a little bit of a love tap, but nothing too serious. Up to P20. Callum's itching to get past, and he's going for it around the outside, but backed out of it. Actually, now is under pressure from Latifi, but he's held him off. Right, so the aim is points. The aim is points. Mick, not Mick. Mazepin has had a great start in the Haas, taken both Alfa Romeos by the looks of things. So slow, so slow. Ripen and dropping down the order, so you know there's looking to get past the Alpha and has done. Hopefully it won't be long before we're able to do the same. And the team want these tyres to last me until lap 19. Not sure. Not sure about 19. We might have to pit a little bit earlier than that. I will try and get to 19, but that is going to be a tough ask. Stroll going for it on Kimi. They will be slow around the apex. We might be able to get involved here. And we'll get Kimi too here, I think. I have to leave him room, but we're through. Following Lance, following Lance through the traffic might actually be a decent idea here if we can stick with the Aston Martin because he's in a car that is out of position pace-wise as well. And him fighting Kimi there moved the fin offline, and we were able to take advantage of that. It's just this next bit. I can't stick with anyone really. <laughs> Tsunoda's going for it on Geo by the looks of things. In fact, it might have even been Geo on Tsunoda. Regardless, the longer they fight, the easier it's going to be for us to keep up and then overtake. There is now Mazepin back down to 15th. After we had a little bit of a wander, slightly higher up through the order. Lap three. DRS, DRS enabled for next lap. DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS oh, zone. Shit. Oh shit again. Come on, Chess. Sweet life out. Concentrate, pal. Fucking hell. There we go. That was better. That was better. Still not able to have a look, though. Maybe down the main straight. This is going to run the risk of turning into a bit of a DRS train, so we're going to have to be aggressive to get through this pack I think because we're all otherwise going to get stuck behind that house for far too long 9 nearly 10% wear after just 3.5 laps is not good alright I might have a go at Stroll here yellow flag yellow flag ahead not sure what for but we've taken Stroll Pierre Gasly's out. Imagine that's uh, an engine failure for the Honda. We'll have a look in a moment. Let's have a look now. Pierre Gasly out of the Grand Prix. Yep. Not an engine blowout, just a mechanical fault of some description. But Gasly's car has stopped working, unfortunately for him. Right, we've got a run on Yuki now. Oh, I didn't want to connect with Geo. Let me check that I haven't got any damage from that. I think it was just wheel to wheel, but I'm not sure. Let's have a look. I was trying to go for Sinoda. Yeah, we've gotten away with it again. Again, we've had a little bit of damage, a little bit of uh, contact, but have gotten away with it without damage. The plan was to. Dive bomb Yuki and get close to Geo, but hopefully not 
not make contact and still make the apex. We did have a little bit of a little bit of a bump with him, but no damage, so we've gotten away with it. Fuel is actually dropping faster than I feared it would. And as you saw from when we tried to take Geo, sorry, when we tried to take Yuki and hit Geo, you can't just throw it up the inside of one for risk of hitting the other. You have to be measured, and I tried to measure it against uh, against Yuki with Geo and didn't quite get it right. Try the same tactic again this lap if we can. Robert is past Mick crucially for his race. I've noticed on the mini map. Poor exit. Although Yuki is going for Geo here. They will both be slow on the exit. I'm not going to bother. They touch. Stroll is sniffing me as well. Contact again. I'm here, Geo. Geo caught on the apex a little bit. And both Yuki and I are past Giovinazzi in that turn. I'm going to go for Yuki into turn one. Now he's gone defensive. So I'll go around the outside of Yuki at turn one. And completely balk it. So I'll let him have the pace lap. Let him have the place back. As per the rules. I took the place. I had lasting advantage by going off track. So I'll let Yuki have the position back again. We're out of DRS threat from behind at least. So that's handy. We're trailing our teammate by 10.9 seconds. Yuki going for it on Mazepin, putting them both offline, making them both vulnerable. Go for Yuki at the inside of turn three. That's P15. It's taken a, it's taking a while to see these guys off, but we are at least getting past them. I got such a good run on Mazepin there, I didn't expect it, didn't know which way to go. I'll go aggressive, but I'm not going to get past him on that attempt. And Yuki's going to have a go at getting me back, so now I'm going to have to defend whilst trying to attack. Easier said than done. Hopefully get Mazepin down the straight, though. Definitely get Mazepin down the straight. We've got a much better exit than him. Thank you, Jesper, for subscribing for an eighth month, my man. Past the Haas. We're into P14. It's time to close down on the other Haas of Mick. 8.6 seconds down the road, and then my teammate after that. 20% wear on almost every corner now. Considering doing a, si a fairly sizable undercut try and gain some time on those ahead of us. We're closing Mick at some pace, but it's the others in front of Mick that are actually pulling away from me that is the frustrating thing. Those points, even though we've been advancing positionally, the points are getting further and further away from us down the track. If they can start to fight amongst themselves, that gaggle of four, it's one of the Aston Martins Fernando Alonso, a Williams in fact, George Russell is up there in P11 right now, and then Robert behind him, then we might be able to try and undercut and gain some time. Thank you for the follow, Leon. Oh, I always, Whenever I'm concentrating on F1, I always get an itchy nose. I don't know why. You'll, you'll have noticed it throughout the course of watching my content. It's like a side effect of concentrating really hard. Some people's tongue comes out like that when they concentrate my nose itches <laughs> they want me to go to lap 19 but I think I'll probably pit about 16 and we'll try a massive undercut see if it'll work if the front runners pit before then or anyone in front of us in that from that Aston Martin backwards pits before then then I, I will pit to cover them off we are then starting to put our faith in the uh, the rain coming because we'll probably be committing to a soft 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 or a soft soft medium and then a quick change to intermediates and the others are the front runners the other red bull is in and a mclaren 
and a Ferrari. So those front runners are starting to come in now off their worn rubber from getting through to Q3. Just as we get to Mick, we're going to dive in the pits. Seb's in the pits as well, in the Aston Martin. So this is where hopefully the undercut will work. We hope. We hope that Mick will come out behind us after this pit stop then. And we'll close the gap on uh, those in front. I think Robert pit as well. Oh no, it's Mick, sorry. Robert certainly hasn't pit. So we're going on to another set of fresh softs. 2.2 second stop is decent. We'll lose a couple of positions, but... Okay, you only have to stop once now. One stop left. We will have very quick rubber now. I need to not get held up by those in front. It's crucial to our undercut strategy that we're able to either get past these guys with minimal effort or that they pit in front of us before we get to them. You can see already just how the gap to Mazepin is... Plummeting. There's been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car. Oh, right don't now. tell me that's going to be someone. Esteban Ocon's out of the race. It's going to be someone coming out of the pits and hitting someone, isn't it? I can guarantee you someone's come out of the pits here and bumped into Esteban Ocon. I thought Ocon was 30. Oh, Ocon's 31. My mistake. Okay, so Ocon's just going slowly. He's Mazepin pit, which is great news for us. That was what we hoped for, that he would pit in front of us. And we should be able to get. Kimmy down into turn three, hopefully. And he doesn't have any DRS. I'm going to go offensive. He's gone defensive, but that should be with a boot full of acceleration here. And hugging the inside line, us through up into P17 again. So the undercut's working so far. We've lost a little bit of time, but not as much as we potentially could have getting through this traffic so far. I just don't want to get stuck behind Latifi. Robert's in the pits now. Robert is in the pits. So Robert is Robert in the pits. Robert has covered off my undercut annoyingly. Hoping that Latifi pits this lap. If he doesn't, we'll get him into turn one. He's pitting. Fantastic. Thank you for the DRS pal. Stroll's in the pits as well. We are past Lance Stroll. Schwartzman is now ooh, eight seconds down the road. And Mick has pit and come out three and a half seconds behind us. Look, that's how much we gained with that undercut. Three and a half seconds we've gained on Mick there. Well, no, about five because we were about a second and a half behind him when we pit. And now we're 3.7 seconds ahead of him. So we've gained an awful lot of time there with that undercut. And that was the plan. So that's worked wonders. And then we'll ask about the weather when we're getting close to that next pit stop. So I'll set it to another set of used softs after this set. And we will pray for rain. Gio's now pitting, which is great. That's him out of the way. Thank you. We got very lucky there that everyone in front of us pit as we were getting to them. We only had to make a couple of... We had to make a couple of check, uh, overtakes actually on track. Up to... Uh, Robert now is seven seconds. He's still behind George, unfortunately for him, but that is now the points there right in front of us. Plan at present is to go to another set of softs and pray that the rain comes. Robert is past George. As I mentioned, my strategy. No, George is back past Robert again. And Robert is past George again. But they're losing all sorts of time. Look, that gap is just plummeting as they scrap away. Which only works in my favour. Robert is now properly passed and disappearing into the distance. I have to try my best to catch my teammate to be now in the end of the Grand Prix. We should zoom up behind the back of George relatively quickly. I hope, anyway. So we're hoping that the rain comes fairly sharpish towards lap 45 or so that would be lovely that's the, the aim, the plan the goal the prayer but as we start lap 25 we will pause because 
It's time for the Italian Grand Prix in real life. So let's switch to the watch along screen. We'll come back to uh, to the rest of the Australian Grand Prix after the Italian Grand Prix. Uh, Lando's taking Lewis again. And... Oh, Max and Lewis side by side. And Lewis is... Oh, no, the contact. Contact. They're both out. They're both out. Max and Lewis contact at the first chicane. Max has taken him out, I think. Max is just... He's stuck up on Lewis, the front of Lewis's car. Safety car. Max just needed to give that up, didn't he? Or did Lewis need to leave him more room? Lewis is trying to get out of it. So to recap, after that ridiculous Italian Grand Prix, we are currently running P12, chasing down George Russell and our teammate to get into the points. We started P21, of course. So we've already made great moves forward. We've stopped once for softs. Now, if there is no rain at all by the end of the Grand Prix, then we should go to mediums at our next stop and go to the end. But there is supposed rain and potentially a lot of it at the end of the Grand Prix. So I don't know whether to go to softs next and then hope that we don't have to make another dry tyre stop and go straight to inters, or we go softs next and hope that we have an advantage big enough to be able to pit behind if there's going to be no rain and make a pit stop on lap 57 of 58 and just take the risk. But no word of any... No word of any rain yet, and no sign of any rain yet. The gap on the car behind by five tenths per lap. But time to get back into the swing of it. Our next stop is supposed to be about lap 38-ish, okay. I think. Gap ahead is 3.0 seconds. Yeah, 38. We're under on fuel. Strategy, we're looking to pit in about six laps time, but we're not sure what tyres to pit for at the moment. Waiting to hear any news about. Waiting to hear any news about the potential weather. We're expecting rain at the end of the race. So I could pit for another set of softs and try and take them to the rain. But if I try and. If I pit for another set of softs and try and take them to the rain and the rain doesn't come, then I'm screwed. This thing, if the rain does come, but right at the end, we need it to come heavily enough so that we're forced into making a change of uh, tyre to wet weather tyres. No, it's not. The, the rain isn't close enough for the weather update to say anything other than it's dry. Rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. Dry seem like the best tyre. Okay, now. softs we go to then. 10 to 15 minutes. I'll pit lap 35 for a set of softs. I've been asking periodically throughout the race and they've said nothing. So we're literally on the borderline of the uh, on the borderline of the, the rain being 15 minutes or so away. So we'll box we'll box this lap. So as everyone else around us goes to mediums, with rain expected Latifi's out. Latifi's just retired. Presumably that's just an engine failure because there was no one else near him. As Latifi retires, we are taking a strategic risk. Rain is on the way. We need it to arrive before the end of the race. Otherwise, we will have to pit again for another set of medium tyres. But rain is on the way. Thanks for follow Supreme. So we're going to use all of our soft sets rather than switch to a slower set of mediums and hope that the rain comes pretty soon. There goes George on his mediums. But these softs should be about 6% worn. They're 7% worn. So now we want the rain to come about lap 45. I'd like it. Expect to see some rain about 10 to 15 minutes from now. I'd like a good, a good decent 10 lap or so run on okay, this set clear. of fresh softs before 
and to just basically to try and make up some ground on those medium runners in front of us before the rain comes because as well I expect to be slow in the rain so I want to get George I'd love to try and close the gap on Robert as well but there's no point closing the gap on Robert if I'm not going to take him because when it comes to turning changing to wet weather tires we'll only end up double stacking behind Robert and then actually losing more time than if I was just sat seven seconds behind him like I am now but we're definitely quicker than George, and it looks like we're quicker than uh, Schwartzman as well. So provided, provided the rain holds off for about 15 minutes, or rephrase, provided the change to wet weather tyres is about 15 minutes away, we should be able to make some good progress. We're definitely much faster than this than this Williams right now. Much faster. I'll get him into turn 13. I'll sit behind him through 11 and 12. And we'll get him into 13. There is a leader closing up behind us to lap us as well, which will do us the world of favour with our fuel situation. I got well offline there, so that didn't help. But, yeah, I'm backing out of that. <laughs> Big lunge. Leave room. Get it done. That was cleaner, wasn't it? Blue flag. Now we're getting blue flag from behind. So the gap to uh, the gap to Robert has opened up to eight seconds now. If you want to hurry up, Valtteri, I'll let you pass, mate. But so we'll we'll be fine for fuel now for the rest of the race. That's no longer a concern. Trying to stay within DRS range of Valtteri. Confidence inspiring to stick pace with the with the Mercedes though, for as long as we have done. Don't know about you guys, but I always he says as he runs on the grass, I always drive better when following another car. Having that having that reference point. No. team isn't currently registering the fact that the rain is coming and because we're so close to our teammate we're going to need to time the time the wet weather change perfectly so otherwise we'll end up having to double stack and lose time or do an extra lap and lose time rain I need you if it's not wet enough to change, I'm actually going to hate life. I think I just saw a raindrop. I did see a raindrop. It's beginning. The beginning of the end. Thanks for follow, Chubbs. And uh, D. Bassett. Welcome to the channel, lads. Tell me my fucking thumb hurts. Look how red that is. Alty! <laughs> 100% races on controller, ouchie. The rain is cut, is falling, but it's not raining anywhere remotely close enough to warrant switching to wet weather tyres. At this rate, we're more likely to need to switch to the mediums for the end and do an extra pit stop to everybody else than we are the softs. Sorry, the inters. Doesn't look like the rain is going to fall quickly enough for us. If I have to pit again, I'll come out 13. As it stands, I will have to pit on lap 57 for another set of medium, for another set of dry weather tyres for a set of mediums. Unless there is a deluge of water in the next four Go laps of course we do have to bear in mind we're only going to lap 57 so i've just remembered so if i do have to pit for another set of dry tires i'm going to have to do it on lap 56 otherwise we'll be disqualified we have three laps for it to rain and push wet weather tires and i just don't think it's going to happen boys 
will actually come out of the pits in front of Russell, apparently, at the moment, if we pit. And as things stand, even if we do now pit for intermediates, at some point, I don't think... I don't think we'd get Robert anyway. The forecast suggests this rain is going to keep getting stronger for at least the next 15 minutes. Dry seem like the best tyre for now. It's still not wet enough for Inters, lads. It's still not wet enough. It's not going to get wet enough early enough. Oh, I'll do what you want, but it's not going. It's not going to do anything. Remaining. We'll just burn through our Inters and probably get caught by Russell. But if you want me to pit for Inters, I will pit for Inters. All right. Well, we'll pit this lap for Inters then, with two laps of race remaining when we come out of the pits. Don't think it's going to do anything, but eh. The conditions are borderline, but borderline enough so. Borderline enough so that um, they're going to be able to finish the race on on dry tyres and have it not affect not affect their lap times too much. It was worth the go. It was worth the go. Robert will get a point for the team anyway. And we unfortunately will lose a place and finish P12, which only got two laps of is, fuel left. is still an improvement on last year where we finished P13, but this is definitely a bogey track for me. We do have to factor in as well, bear in mind we haven't upgraded the car for five or six races now. We haven't upgraded the car at all for five or six races. So we, at the beginning of next season, we will take a massive jump in competitiveness, all in one go. But we are on our final lap right now, and it's a case of just trying to defend from George and keep the Williams behind. George Russell may be, may be a driver that is in our second seat next season, potentially. We might stick with Robert, maybe for the first half of next year perhaps haven't yet decided a, t a p10 for robert Whoop. p10 for robert here isn't bad considering where he started and where i started whether we'll get driver of the day i don't know as valtteri wins the grand prix i'm gonna have to let max go here i think if he can catch me which he is doing let George get right behind but yeah it another four or five laps another four or five laps and we would have uh, we would have been okay literally DRS has just got disabled as we're crossing the line it wouldn't it was very very close to working very very close to working but unfortunately it wasn't to be a p12 in Australia Clearly another bogey track to add to the list with uh, Suzuka and Spa and Silverstone. Basically all of my favourite tracks I'm rubbish at. All of my favourite tracks I'm rubbish at. Valtteri from Lando from Lewis. Lando P2 here as he was in real life as well. A point for Robert. Frustratingly. Two points for Vettel and uh, Aston Martin. So they extend over us as we head into the final race of the season. The gap is 28 points. 18 points is the gap at the top of the driver's standings though. So the driver's world championship title goes to the final race. Goes to the final round. But Valtteri does look strong. Valtteri looks like he's in a strong position for that driver's title. Let's have your thoughts. A P21 to a P12. Feel these grid penalties are affecting the sport. Uh, it's part of the sport. It's part of the sport. The weather was miserable today, but do you feel this was an advantage for you? Uh, not really. You lost your teammate today. Was it just not your day? No, it was just Robert's day today. Your team did an incredible job at this track in comparison to last season. Did we? Is this something you've been preparing for? Last year P13, this year P12. I don't know whether that's a massive improvement, although I guess considering where we started, it is. Our overall lap, our overall race time was probably a lot quicker this year, despite the wet weather. We're going to lose the rivalry to Max, though, unfortunately. 
not to be, but weren't expecting it anyway. We do actually go up a little bit with our, our rating, as does Robert and the team. We get all of our sponsorship finances come in, so we earn a million pounds. Happy enough with that, I think. This week's income from the sponsors has cleared. Oh, of course, there's a massive, our running costs. there's a massive gap between the two Grand Prix now. Still no news. Still no news about. Um, still no news about regulation changes. We need to make another uh, decision with regards our income and our sponsors. Um, top four finishes are no. No, five constructors points. No, achieve at least one podium position within the team. Beat a rival. Ten constructors points. Top ten finish. Could go back with Lupo for a top ten finish. More than 30 laps in practice. What we have from Novus. So Novus was 230, 5.30, 5.40 ish. And Lupo was, yeah, Lu Novus is more more valuable than uh, Lupo is than Lupo. Sorry, so we can add we can add Novus back to the car in all of the areas where Novus was previously. Financially, we are in an exceptional position right now, as I'll be able to show you momentarily. There we go, and obviously PSD on the end slates. So financially and resource points wise, we're in a great position. Twenty four and a half million pound in the bank. Nine thousand four hundred and sixty one resource points Finally, in the bank. Good news. It's entirely up to you. Uh, to I'll go for the resource Thanks. points. I appreciate Thank you very much because everything's going to get super expensive towards the end of next season. Right. Simulated training for Robert. Um, oh, we don't need to do that because I'm not adding anything on. Take the team thing and we'll do that. That's not a problem. Right, advancing then towards Abu Dhabi. And if we go to Abu Dhabi, we'll see if we get any... Um... How do you want us to deal with this one? Oh, I'll take, lose the, the cash to get the resource points. We'll see if we get any um, regulation changes. Continually nothing yet so far, though. Either we'll have none, or we'll have loads. As we go to Abu Dhabi then. I do have mail, you're right, but that's not specifically for this save. That's just in general on the game. Now in the performance index, you can see how we've fallen behind. We are now fifth on the list. Fifth on the list for uh, performances. We advance to the Abu Dhabi race weekend. So, let's see if there's any regulation changes. Doesn't appear so. No regulation changes at all for the next season. So we should be able to start free spending. We should be able to start free spending between this season and next season. So, as you can see there, we leveled off basically from Mexico onwards. Or even from the United States onwards. I haven't spent any resources... Because, of course, you have to factor in the manufacturing time. We probably haven't spent any resource points since Singapore, I wouldn't have thought. If not before. I think perhaps the early improvements we've made are actually come from Ferrari because they're our engine provider. We don't need to change any parts for this Grand Prix. We're absolutely fine on that front. So, the next race, then, will be the season ender at Abu Dhabi. And then we've got... Tens of millions to spend and over 10,000 resource points to spend as well to get ourselves back up that R&D performance chart, which we will do, which we will do. Right, that's all for this YouTube video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any further content. Season 3 is just around the corner. I'll see you guys next time.